How are we doing? Okay, so uh, I'm about to, well, we're refurbishing the diff, or we're not refurbishing it. We're uh, hoping, well, I'm sure I have found the issue, which is uh, the pinion bearing. Unfortunately, I know I'm not going to be able to get the pinion bearing out today because uh, you need this special 41 millimeter steep socket and the spline tool so the socket just holds the nut in place and locks on the outer casing and we unwind using the uh, center of the pinion on the spline but how do you get that? <laughs> how do you get that seal out of there <laughs> um, so I've just struggled to get I've just serviced the Aldex unit which was in the other vid and uh, even though it's not a very old it's one of the last Freelanders they built 13 or 14 and um, just struggled to get bits out of the Haldex unit and this is one of them so I made a little tool because this was all crudded in this is the outer of the filter cap just to use it as a slide hammer and pull that out so I'm going to do the same idea for this thing. So I've got a couple of self-tappers that hopefully are going to do it. I just made the hole in this with a brad hole but I uh, obviously have to drill the seal because it's steel centred or the centre of the middle bit. It's rubber on the outside but it's steel in the centre. So if we just quickly measure that, the inner of this, you know, the root, if you like, of the spiral is three seven five. So if I, if I drilled four mil, it should catch that quite nicely because the top edge of the spiral is nine mil. So if I just quickly drill a couple of holes in that. I'm going to go for a 3.5 because there's plenty of taper start on there, isn't there? So I just have to don't press on too hard so the drill doesn't go through and snap off inside. So a long way in. God, that's gonna go that. Yes. Yeah. So one in the other side, one eighty from that is around about there. Still a bit of light. Fighting, come on, baby. Yes, we're in. Let's 
gonna blow some uh, some of that swarf out. I know I'm gonna obviously clean everything before we before we put the new bearings in. We just wanna get the swarf out of their eyes. Okay, fingers crossed. Yes. So, a couple of self tappers. Make yourself a little bridge on your slide hammer with a hook in the end, and it's uh, fairly simple without doing any damage to anything. So now I can see. Bloody hell, that's a weird looking nut. 12 sided I think it's a 12 sider you can see the nut down there well buried in obviously now I know why you need to have the special tool and uh, hopefully that's going to come it's weekend coming up so I'm probably not going to get it till Monday so I'll just add to this I'll make it I'll make the Haldex part 1 Seal out part two. Pull in the uh, pulling the pinion out and getting the pinion out of races out of the casing, which will be another issue because they looks like there's not a great deal of land to get anything behind. But we may have to make something because I would like to. Um, to draw them out and draw them in. I mean, I've just, I'm going to put this one back, but I, um, I pulled this one from the casing, from the outer casing. Oh, this is the crown wheel side, which is this one. And uh, they actually do look, these look very good. And I think it would be a shame to actually draw these inners off. I mean, it wasn't such an easy job to get this outer race out. So I think I'm only going to go for pinion bearings because they do look good. And when you assemble them, like I've wiped off what I can, that feels nice. So. I think it would be a shame to disturb that plus they're obviously shimmed not just for the end float but for the engagement into the pinion so I don't know what's on the other side but there was a shim behind this one which will obviously go back because I'm going to put these original bearings back in whereas if I went for a new set of bearings would that distance be different? You know, do you have to clock these up? There's not a great deal of information on these. I think what they like you to do is uh, buy a service exchange unit. They don't probably don't like you being being in there. And I think it's the same with that Haldex unit. And when you look at the diff, the actual spider and the little um, sun and planets inside for the differential there's no way you could ever change those because it's actually the crown wheel is welded onto the carrier and then machined so uh, you know it's virtually a, if you had an issue in there you're going to be buying a well it, would it be service X? <laughs> you 
you're not service next anything apart from the casing so it might even be scrap so yeah you know a little bit disappointed on Land Rover for putting such a light duty differential in such a heavy vehicle I mean what is it 1.5 1.7 tons really this Aldex unit in diff is made for like a an Audi Quattro or you know an X70 or something but I think you're pushing it to the limit you know when you're uh, putting it in a something with a Land Rover badge on it you know with a massive reputation I mean we don't, we don't do a great deal of towing with it but it is nice to have a bit of traction on uh, the back wheels as well as the front so when the tool turns up um, we'll, which will be next week hopefully Monday we'll be having a go trying to get this um, pinion out and the outer races of the bearing so we'll catch you in the next one ok the tools turned up heavy duty stuff this is it We're removing the pinion nut really well made stuff heavy duty 12 sided and I just have to tell you I've already tried I've got a big vice and the bench is fairly solid I've just tried it in the vice and it's absolutely solid so um, I've set it up now I've got a bit of scaffolding tube a piece of scaffolding tube fits perfectly through the hole in the casing I've just put my big bar in there I've got it resting on a couple of pieces of wood so I'll just move you outside and we'll just get this going Very tight. So the uh, got the pinion shaft out. It's very tight all the way because uh, we probably used half a tube of Loctite <laughs> on the nut. But yeah, it's out. Then obviously brass drift, drift the pinion out of the casing not too bad brass drift straight down out you came and obviously uh, the inner races so the small one 
think it's the one that generally gives trouble, the outer one. You can actually draw it out because there's enough of a lip. So I just had some washers, some thick washers, a bit of plate and a, an M16 bolt and I managed to draw that, that one out. Not too bad. However, the bigger one on the inside, there's no lip for you to get behind to get on it. It's a little shim behind this one. So I ended up with a large long drift and just got it started on one side. And once it moved about a quarter of an inch, I just managed to walk it out by tapping it. And that one has got some, uh, just starting to go that one. So the, obviously that one just slides off when you tap the shaft out. That's that one. This one, I've just managed to sneak the bearing puller uh, in behind, behind it. It's very, very tight, but it is coming, he said. Yeah, it started, so that's going to come, no problem. It's just very, and this is a hydraulic puller, so it's got a lot of power, but they're very tight. I mean, the only other way you'd probably have to destroy the soft metal outer cage, let all the rollers drop off, and then be very careful with a disc grinder and just disc grind it till you're nearly through, and then give it a whack, and it should split and uh, hopefully fall off. So that's, that will come off, it's on the way. And all that leaves me with then is these inners. So again, there's hardly any lip, but if you put your drift on an angle, you will get that. I've not taken the seal out the other one yet, but I can feel on the inside and it's exactly the same. So they're going to come out manually and maybe just warm warm it up a little bit first just so because obviously the coefficient of expansion of the aluminium is greater than the steel so it'll make it a bit easier same with that one I'm just looking at the carry, diff carrier bearings that one I'm going to get that under there no problem and same with that one so they're going to come off, no problem. So I'm just looking now to order the bearings and for some reason, this is 20, 2013, I thought they would all, the bearings would all be the same because the casing's the same. I know they changed to Haldex's fourth generation later on, but I don't want any Haldex bits, I just want the diff bearings, so I've just had to send out a couple of enquiries with the Reggio number and the um, VIN number or chassis number to make sure I get the right bearings. But I didn't think there was any difference in any of them if it had this type of casing. So, see what we come back with. So, I'm going to continue and pull all these bearings out. I've ordered my filter and that little cap that I had to damage to get out which comes with the filter and the oil for that. Pumped back on, spot on, all done. Uh, so just bearings and seals now and obviously the oil for the diff. So I just have to see what we come back with with regard is the on the later models, like I don't know, 2011 onwards, are the bearings different? I wouldn't have thought so, because uh, the casings are all the same. Anyway, 
so when the bearings arrive we'll, uh, I'm going to draw the, be the bearings in, I'm not going to bash them in and hopefully the shims that I'm taking out will match up with the bearings that I'm putting in, hopefully. So that's where we are at the moment and um, as soon as I get my new bearings we'll just have another few minutes of pressing and drawing a couple of the inners and outer races into the box and onto the shaft. So we'll catch you in the next one. So we're uh, up to the diff carrier bearings. It did come off no problem. Fairly tight but yeah it's off. So this will go underneath if you've got one of these Saxis picker vents um, adjustable bearing pullers. So it does sit there and it's not touching the cage so there's no reason as long as it's not that tight that it won't come. So we'll just quickly try this one and if this one comes off then I know the other ones the other side's going to come up. Three quarter. The only thing I had to do was I suppose I could have found a three-quarter drive socket that might sit on there, but I just knocked this bit of a spacer up that's going to sit on the inside of the diff carrier. So uh, should be good for us. So I'll try it without being in the vice. I'm hoping it's not going to be too tight. Your toes. Oh, we're looking, not too bad. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tight. leverage or holding power. Come on baby. I think it's I think it's
this going? Yeah, it's moving. She's on the way. Going a bit easier. Yep, come in now. Nearly, nearly. So yeah, if you've got a Saxis Pig of Ants bearing puller, definitely going to come off. So, it's got the bottom end to do with this. And, like I say, you've got to drift out the outers because you can't get anything in there. Obviously pulling them in. I'll just use a bolt, big bolt, a nut to pull them in. But uh, so I'm just going to have a fight with these outers now. And then once they're out, I can order the bearings. So see you in a sec. <laughs> 